Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. After one week hiatus, we are back with everybody's favorite segment here on the channel, the Power Rankings. Just finished watching Minnesota and Texas go 13 innings, I think it was, before Texas walked three guys in a row to end the game. Pretty wild ending on that one. Seattle wrapped up. We got Arizona and Cincinnati going into the ninth. Arizona just dealing in, adding some runs. So pretty much coming to an end on this Sunday here. Of course, we always film these videos before the Sunday night game, which tonight is Atlanta and San Francisco. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about all the teams quickly. Usually takes about 20 minutes, but before we jump into it, guys, we got less than one week before the giveaway ends. We have to hit 750 subscribers in order to hit that giveaway by the end of the month. I'm hoping we can do it. We're about 24, 23 subs away. And guys, I know 90% of you guys that watch this don't subscribe. So please help out. Even if you don't want to win the giveaway, help out everyone else that does help us get there. And I'm giving away a hat. Details below. And we got a couple more if we can keep this rolling. Other than that, guys, we're going to jump right into it. Number 30, pretty much convinced now that this is the bottom team in the MLB. One and two against Oakland. Their arch nemesis on the power rankings all season long. I think they tied the series. I'm pretty sure they won two to one in the series earlier, but I still think Oakland's a tiny bit better. Kansas City gets swept by Seattle, one of the hottest teams in the MLB over the weekend. And they're a disaster. Ready for next season for that number 29 team we just talked about. Team that I have probably think are a little bit better in 29, but against my better judgment, I'm going to leave them there for now. They started the week, went 2-2 two and two against the White Sox. They beat Kansas City. It's a pretty good week for a team that's been battling in the basement all season long. The A's continue to have these kind of schedule. I think everyone focused in on their schedule and their record and stuff like that when it comes to power rankings. Got to remember, Kansas City's playing the Central while they're playing the West, and they're only two games apart in terms of wins. Got to give them a little bit more credit than most people do, but I'm going to leave them at 29 because 28, they split the series with this guy, these guys uh, over the weekend, and then White Sox went one and two against Seattle earlier in the week. They were the team that broke Seattle's major winning streak, of course, but uh, it wasn't really enough. They still lost that series, and the White Sox continue. They sold... Not a whole lot going on there. Expect to see some change in ownership. Not ownership, but like management, player changes next season. We're going to see a whole different team in the White Sox. So right now, we have them in the bottom. Got to see some things change. Number 27, maybe could be even worse. 0-3 against Tampa. 1-2 and against Baltimore. We saw over the weekend, they kept it close with Baltimore. They had the lead in every single game, of course, winning today, avoiding the sweep. They had the lead on Saturday. They had the lead on Friday. Both late game blows by the Rockies. They just don't seem to win. They can't get the wins across the board. They're in a tough division. They're basically the worst team in the National League, and it's hard to argue otherwise. Number 26, a team that may be making an argument for that. We got St. Louis Cardinals. 1-2 and two against Pittsburgh. 0-3 against Philadelphia. Another one of those teams that, of course, sold off everything at the trade deadline, much like the White Sox. They're ready. They're ready to go into the offseason. Top players are probably ready, have their eyes on the offseason with Goldschmidt, Arenado. They got not a whole lot of pitching. Wainwright's ending his last season with maybe his ERA crossed over nine at this point. Um, been a rough season for the Cardinals. I think everyone's ready to just take a rest, rebuild. I expect them to be a lot better for next year. However... The division's gotten tougher, so who knows how much headway they're going to make next year. Number 25, we've got the New York Mets. 1-2 and two against Atlanta. 1-2 and two against the Angels. Again, not a whole lot to say about the Mets. Big disappointment this season. Pretty mediocre week. I think they're 5-5 five and five over their last 10, so just kind of playing out the season. I know we had a comment in the comment section a couple weeks ago saying, watch out, they're going to make the playoffs. Sorry, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, it's pretty clear that they're out of it at this point. Number 24, Pittsburgh Pirates. 2-1 against St. Louis. 3-1, or 1-3, sorry, they lost to the Cubs. And they're kind of playing out the rest of their season at this point. They had that great April. Talk about it every time it comes up. But you got to play a whole season. And right now the Pirates 
are a weaker team across the board. They're not winning series. They're not really being consistent in any department. Some days you're going to get a lot of runs from them. Other days they're getting shut out. Same with the pitching. Just all around not consistent whatsoever. And at this point, I don't even know. Like We had them in the bottom row for a couple of years. They fought their way out maybe late last season. Most of this season we saw them peak up here. But now I'm starting to wonder, even though they do have one of the stronger farm systems, are they going to be able to put it together? Pirates fans are going to be in for an interesting next season. I think it's going to be make or break. It's either disaster or they're finally going to take that step forward. Uh, but we've got to wait till next year. Number 23, another team. It's got to wait another entire year. It's just unbelievable at this point that the Angels just can't get it together. It's almost like they were in the playoff race. They were doing everything. And then they went all in. And they went all in with like a pair of twos that got counterfeit or something. Angels completely falling apart. Otani dealing with now with that arm injury. And I think it's said that he's done for the season, at least for pitching. Angels, complete disaster. They're going to be losing Otani in this offseason. I don't see any other way around it. It's like they're cursed. I don't know what's going on with them, but I can't put them any higher. And that's including with Detroit. The Tigers 1-2 and two against the Cubs. 1-2 and two over the weekend against Tampa Bay. Just losing week. Pretty consistently the norm with all the teams we've talked about so far. Tigers, on the other hand, they have some pieces. They're going to be moving forward. I do expect this team to be a competitive team a little bit more than next year as well. Like, in theory, they were competitive in, the, in this division for a long time. Uh, eventually, the wheels came off. They don't didn't quite have it all together yet. I expect them to continue to improve on this season. Last year, they are bottom row contenders. I expect them to keep continuing to improve, and next year, we're going to probably see them higher. Number 21, a team that I just don't understand. 2-1 and one against Miami. 0-3 oh against Milwaukee. So just a losing week again for the Padres. Clearly, I've given up on them at this point. We did the playoff prediction video. Didn't even talk about them. They're not making the playoffs. It's Now it's about how are they going to look going forward? Like this team, I can't quite put my finger on it. Are they going to continue to be this bad? Next, Are they going to make additions in the offseason? What's this team going to do? What can they do to improve this team? They've spent so much money and it hasn't worked. This division continues to get stronger around them with Arizona. Giants are always consistently strong. And the Rockies can only be bad for so long. Is it only a matter of time before the Padres become the basement dwellers that they had been for a decade? And they never really got anything to show for it. So it's a pretty disappointing season for them. Maybe it's an outlier. Maybe we'll see them back in the top two rows next year. But just disaster. Number 20. I don't even know what to say. This is probably the lowest the New York Yankees have ever been in the four or five years of doing the power rankings. Just an absolute wild week. Two defensive highlights that just were seen all over the baseball world by the Yankees just making big mistake after big mistake. Uh, one and two against Washington. One and two against Tampa. They're just losing. They're clearly the worst in the AL East. Um, and there have been a pretty big disappointment all around now for the rest for the season. Um, what they're going to do next year is kind of the same story as the Padres. You expected them to be better this year. They're not doing it. It's going to be all about what they do in the offseason because they're not making the playoffs either. Number 19, starting to give credit to these guys. They're, I think, around 30 and 20 over their past 50 games. If you kind of zoom out as a whole, they're playing super competitive baseball. They won both series this week against the Yankees. They won, and they played Miami over the weekend, and they won that one as well so like Washington I said it for a long time during the season that they were clearly the worst in the National League East now I'm honestly not so sure after beating Miami this weekend playing 30 and 20 600 ball over their past 50 games gotta be started to be impressed with this team of course news comes out this week they're finally gonna retire Strasburg so that's gonna I guess give them some room to make some maneuvers but this team has a bright future ahead of them. They're playing strong down the stretch. Seem to be working well as a unit. Had to keep them in the second bottom row. Middle row is start, that's where you got to talk about teams that are on the verge of playoffs. And that obviously I don't see that being a case for Washington. Maybe it's not the case for the next couple of teams either. But I, Washington has made a ton of progress as a team over this season. A lot more than I would have expected them to at the beginning. Next up. Uh, the Cleveland Guardians, 1-2 and two against the Dodgers. 
And then they upset the Blue Jays over this weekend. So it's a 500 week. The problem with Guardians is they've been on a pretty bad tear over the past couple of weeks. Uh, they've dropped about six or seven games behind Minnesota at this point. Playoffs are far, seem, they're pretty much out of reach. They probably had to win this division. Probably had to start sweeping teams that are ahead of them like Toronto. They managed to get away with a big win today in the series, but it took extra innings. Um, and really, they got to play a massive, insane win streak. And I don't think Cleveland is a team capable of doing that. So I kind of consider them out. Next up, Miami Marlins. One and two against San Diego. One and two against Washington. Miami has really come back down to earth. Ever since I started agreeing that maybe they should be a top two row team uh, they've fallen uh to down it's been a interesting season watching miami i had them super low for a long time even though they had a winning record then i launched them up the board because they just continued to have a winning record and then they kind of start came back to where i expected them to be right there in the average middle of the league that's where i expected them to be that's where they're ending up it's probably no coincidence at all 16 this is interesting we got cincinnati reds 3-0 against the Angels, and then they're going to drop 1-3 to Arizona because as I look over, they're in the ninth, and uh, Arizona is up 5-2, so it looks like they're going to drop that one. 1-3, one tough, tough series. This was basically a playoff series between, between these two teams, and with Cincinnati coming out, losing, now they're a couple of games out in the wild card situation. Arizona's hopping. Arizona's a lot hotter than the Reds are, and that's pretty much what makes the difference here. The Reds had that hot run for a little bit there, but in baseball, you gotta be consistent. You have to do it for a long haul. The Reds just didn't have enough gas in the tank to do it this year. Mind you, this is a great step in the right direction for the Reds. We probably are starting to see a Reds team that's gonna be competitive going forward for a long time. Number 15, we got the Toronto Blue Jays and I think I've had them here multiple times this season. Every time I put them this low in the power rankings, they go on a win streak. So maybe that'll happen this time around. But guys, this team just doesn't seem to put anything together. They don't win when they need to win. They're not beating series with teams like Cleveland. They're losing every series they play with Baltimore. They're terrible in their own division. But they have a good team, so it makes absolutely no sense. They're right there in the thick of the playoff hunt even predicted them making the playoffs in the most recent video. But guys, I don't know how I can keep faith in this team because every time I try to, they put up disastrous weeks. It's going to be a big week coming up to them. They obviously have a lot of division games coming up. Um, and when they play the Yankees, they haven't had good success against the Yankees so far this year. But they're going to play them a couple of times. they got to win those series and maybe take some sweeps when the Yankees are low like they are. Number 14, Diamondbacks climbing on up. 2-0 against Texas, 2-1 or 3-1 and one against Cincy. Massive week for Arizona. They've been one of the hottest teams in the MLB. I had given up on them and put them down in the bottom rung. Some guys were questioning it. I had pretty much wrote them off because early in the season, they were hot. They were winning. They were top of the division, and I wasn't quite buying it, but of course, the top of the rotation eventually made me come around. Merrill Kelly, Gallon just playing amazing. This lineup and putting up runs. They showed it in the series against Cincinnati as well. Arizona, they're on the border here. I'm still not ready. They got to have a big week coming up, and they will be playing the Dodgers, and that's going to be an interesting series that I'm watching um, for them coming up in this week. Maybe it's going to be a little bit of an edging up. If they keep winning, we'll edge them up here, but I don't really see them peaking too much further than that. Number 13, same kind of story. 1-2 and two against Philly, 0-2 oh against Atlanta. If you strictly look at who's hotter and who's not, you'd probably put Arizona ahead of Giants, because Arizona's been hotter over the past 30 games, way more than San Fran. We saw San Fran have their huge hot streak about a month, month and a half ago. They've really cooled off. It's come, kind of been like a crashing cool off. But I still think overall, these two teams meet up in a five-game series. I'm giving the edge to San Fran. I know they're not going to play a five-game series unless somehow in the playoffs it happens, but that's kind of how I look at this board right now, um, giving that edge to San Fran. Number 12. Taking care of business, finally, for Minnesota. 0-2 against Milwaukee. 2-1 against Texas. So a little five-game week for Minnesota. A little bit of a break, and we're going to see how they come out of it this after this weekend. They're going to play a lot more games forward. Obviously, 
But Minnesota, they've got that extra lead now. They do have a team that has been very competitive. Mind you, they beat up a little bit on the Texas Rangers. They were at home. They went extra innings in the rubber match, not giving that a lot of credit. Minnesota clearly going to make the playoffs. How strong they're going to match up against any of these teams ahead of them, which is going to be who they're playing in the playoffs, uh, that's a whole different story because I think we start getting into teams that are quite a little bit better than Minnesota. Maybe not quite with this one, but 2-2 two and two against Houston, 1-2 and two against the Dodgers. Boston continues to hang around, hang around, hang around in this playoff race. Borderline. And I have a lot more credit in them than I do Blue Jays. I think they have a better shot at going into the playoffs and going stronger than these two teams. That's why I do have them higher, even though they're not in that playoff spot right this second. They're being competitive. They're going to get some bolsters from these injuries coming back. They're, I really like their lineup. So I think Boston has been a little bit under the radar all, radar all season long. And I think it's going to come back and it's going to be all right for Boston. Number 10. Houston, 2-2 two two against Boston, 2-1 and one against Detroit. Nice winning week in a Western division that's just gotten super clustered. It's been wild. And right now, I do consider them the third best team in that division. Arguably, you could argue any which way. You could argue Houston being the best. But, geez, I, I saw them have some issues, especially with some of the pitching that has been so consistent all season long. There's been a little bit of hiccups as of late. It has me a little bit of concern. Mind you, matching up against any of these teams, I am not worried. I think anyone in this top team, top 10 teams, can beat any of the other top 10 teams on a given night. It's more looking at the grand scheme of the picture at this point. Number nine, the Chicago Cubs. These guys have just performed super well over the past little bit, winning that super big division series over the weekend, three to one against Pittsburgh, winning an earlier series in the week against Detroit. They're beating the teams that are below them. Their numbers are starting to come around. Expectations of wins weren't quite pouring in early in the season, even though the analytics were on their side. Starting to come around for the Cubs. I think they're gonna pretty much walk away with that second wild card spot at this time. And I think it's well deserved. I would be a little bit surprised if the Cubs fall apart down the stretch here and don't make the playoffs. A team that is capable of falling apart down the stretch, we do have the Texas Rangers 0-2 against Arizona in the beginning of the week, 1-2 and against Minnesota. Mind you, they've been pretty atrocious if we're looking at just their last 20 games. I don't know for sure, but it feels like they've won like four games maybe. I could arguably have them even lower, um, but guys, these guys have been number three in our power rankings for week after week after week. So I wasn't ready to drop them out of the top 10 or even down to 10th at this point. I know Houston on, on most given nights has competed super well against Texas, might even have hold the series lead right now against these two teams. I do believe Texas is stronger than they have been performing these past couple of weeks. We'll see. The run differential is still around 150. It's just wild to watch how this team has unraveled. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have number seven, the Seattle Mariners, just absolutely destroying teams as of late. Two and one against the White Sox, three and zero against the Royals. So absolutely destroying the bottom row. Five and one this week. They've just been winning and been winning and been winning over the past six, seven weeks. It feels like these guys have shown that they're capable. They very well are in a position now to get that second buy in the American League, now having taken over the division lead. This team maybe went a little bit under the radar, had them in the bottom, second bottom row for feels like two months straight almost. And maybe that was a product of them having a much tougher schedule than a lot of the other teams. They've kind of fallen out, but they've been winning and they've been playing good against some of these top teams as of late. It's hard not to get a lot of confidence behind the Seattle Mariners team getting hot at the right time. Number six, after dropping them on the floor, we got the Philadelphia Phillies. Two and one against San Fran, three and oh against St. Louis. And I think we're finally seeing the Phillies getting into the playoff form that we kind of wanted to expect them to see at the beginning of the season. Mind you, we can't hold it against them for taking so long. These Phillies are a strong team overall and they're pretty much, in my opinion, a lock to make the playoffs have to be a disaster they're probably a lock to be hosting the first round of the playoffs probably the highest seed in the wild card so Phillies looking good as of late number five 
after me giving them a lot of hate for quite a while, these guys have done wonders. Three and O oh early in the week before splitting, losing one game to Detroit over the weekend. A five and one week for Tampa. Got to give them some credit. They've been having a couple consistent winning weeks in a row here. And they've kind of got back to the form we saw early in the season. There was a lot of concern there right there in the middle, but they've managed to extinguish that while other teams continue to sh give me concern. Cough, cough, Blue Jays. Uh, cough, cough, Texas. Houston gives me concern from time to time. So the Rays have pretty much cemented, in my opinion, as the only other team has probably secured that playoff spot. Because with the West, we have to remember the Rays are ranked higher than them. They're fighting for division lead, and whoever wins that division will get the bye because the Rays' best shot getting a bye, they have to, of course, win the division. And right now, they're about three games back. They might have made it two after today, um, but that's interesting. Number four, we got the Milwaukee Brewers, 2-0 and oh, early in the week, 3-0 and oh against San Diego over the weekend, so this what was that five and oh, I have these guys written down. Um, Miami, I guess they played earlier in the week. I thought I saw a loss when I was going through the studies, but they're hot. Um, I got questioned when they were number six, I think two weeks ago. I, I just think this team is built for playoffs. I don't think there's a lot of teams below them that will be able to give them a run in a five game series, and in this position, of course. They're not really in a position at number four to get the bye. I think the bye is pretty hard for them to reach. But, of course, they're going to have their best pick. They're going to play one of these bottom of teams in that first round of the playoffs. They're going to have Woodruff. They're going to have Barnes or Burns, sorry, uh, go out there and put up two strong outings from starting pitching. So, in that case, I do give them a strong edge when it starts to be playoff time. This is a good team. And you don't want to, they're not a team that goes on massive losing streaks. Even though we saw it earlier in the year, they made the changes at the trade deadline that you would want to do as the Milwaukee team. Number three, Baltimore Orioles 2-1 and one against Toronto, 2-1 and one against Colorado. Even though they lost today to Colorado, almost had a shot at the sweep. They blew it. It's okay. We're all going to blow games along the way. The O's, I think, might be the most consistent team in all of the American League all season long. They've just been puttering along winning series maybe not a ton of sweeps along the way but they're just consistently winning and that's the kind of team they have a depth across the board pitching there's depth none of the guys stand out as being atrocious in their rotation at all their bullpen super strong and one through nine in the batting order they managed to get it done so orioles i think are a pretty strong shot to be that by of course tampa bay the only risk to them right there on their heels Anything can happen. We still got about six weeks of baseball to go. Number two, we got the Dodgers, two and one against Cleveland, two and one against Boston. Winning week. Next week's gonna be super interesting for the Dodgers because they're playing Arizona, which in my opinion is one of their biggest rivals in this division. They can really show Arizona, you're not ready for the playoffs. It's almost like a playoff series. And they also play number one, Atlanta next week. And that's what everyone's gonna be focusing on because Atlanta went two and one against the Mets. They went two and oh against San Fran, of course, playing tonight against San Fran. Atlanta's been in that number one spot for quite some time. If the Dodgers want a shot at this, they have to win maybe a sweep against Atlanta in this coming week. These two guys have been number two, one and two for quite some time. And it's hard to argue that they shouldn't be at this point. Seems to be a hard line here. Those two teams are pretty much secured to get that first round by in the playoffs whereas everyone else is still fighting and jockeying for position so guys let me know what you guys think of these power rankings if you haven't yet please subscribe to the channel we are about 23 away from our first giveaway we need 750 subs i think it's by thursday whatever september 1st is it might be friday we'll call it friday either way i'll probably make another video for Tuesday to help bolster us there. So make sure you're looking out for that. Tell your friends, tell your family, get some subs rolling in guys, because this is the time for the giveaway. Um, other than that guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you out there for that next video. Peace out.